So it was about a year ago, I was having a conversation with one of my best friends, one of the most successful information marketers I know. And he was telling me how he completely left the information marketing business, sold all of his products, uh, and simply went into consulting because as he said about a year and a half ago, the information product business is dead. What I can tell you is what may have been true a year and a half ago completely changed, radically transformed in February and March in 2020. I will tell you in the interest of full disclosure that I've sold as many products and online trainings in the last two months than I've sold in the last two years. That's because the market just woke up and they're ready finally to hear from you. So on today's show, we're going to talk about how you can create, host, and promote online products that grab your audience's attention and get them to buy from you. Ed Talks Live is next. All right, hey, what's up, party people? Welcome back to Ed Talks Live, episode 51. Man, how did we get this far? We're, we're gonna rock, I'm telling you, we're just gonna keep going way past 100. Well, I wanna welcome you to the show. As usual, if you're joining us on YouTube, jump in the chat on the right-hand side, tell us who you are, where you are, where you are, and what you do. I saw a whole bunch of you checking in, even before the show. I, I think I've had, I've had people saying hello in chat up to an hour uh, before the show. Uh, but today we're going to talk, I'm going to introduce in just a moment, a good friend of mine, longtime friend of mine, someone who's been in this business for a very long time. He's the president of a website called, uh, or a web um, a membership uh, and CRM a pr platform called Kajabi. Uh, today we're going to talk about online products that rock. We're going to show you how to create and promote online products that get people to buy from you even while you're sleeping. And let me tell you, there's nothing like waking up in the morning grabbing a cup of coffee, looking at your email and seeing that someone paid you 500, maybe 900, maybe $1,500 for a product that was delivered to them that same night online. You didn't need to drop it off at their house or anything like that, right? So today we're gonna talk about how you can do that. In a moment, I'm gonna introduce Jonathan. By the way, make sure that you're here tomorrow. Yesterday, I started our first of what's probably gonna be three parts in a conversation called Copywriting 401 how to grab your prospects by the eyeballs so they say yes. Tomorrow, uh, I'm gonna be taking you through uh, a sales letter so that you can see how to put together uh, an online promotion. So before we get cranking, let me say hello to some of you who just said hello in chat. Barry, what's up, man? Barry checked in this morning at about uh, 9.31. Good to see you, Gina, uh, as well. Diana, hello, hello, good to see you as well. Uh, what's up, Jim? Good to see you. Dennis, welcome back to the show. Aaron. I'm gonna see you. I'm gonna see you in person, Aaron, in about two weeks, baby. Uh, Aaron's one of our attendees coming to Big Pivot in Dallas. And by the way, if you just joined us and you're like, wait a second, did you just say live event? Yes, live event in Dallas, two weeks from tomorrow, actually. Uh, what's up, Barry? Welcome back to the show. I already said hello to you. Aubrey, hello, hello. Asali, uh, thanks for joining us. What's up, Bruce? Good morning from the oven. I don't know what the deal is. It was 95 degrees. June in California yesterday. I don't, have, I don't have an air conditioner. My office door is open. I've got the fan nice and close. Pointed right at me. Hello, Anita. Good to see you as well. Donald, my man. Hey, what's up, David Zetz? Good to see you as well. Mike Semmel, just finished delivering. Mike's been creating. Mike, Mike sent me a, I should have had my coffee mug, Mike. Mike sent me a coffee mug about a self-licking ice cream cone. I call, oh, there it is. <laughs> I call I call online products self licking ice cream cones because you just you just put it out there and then it so it licks itself. <laughs> uh -huh. What's up, <laughs> Lior? Good to see you as well, and welcome back. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring in my man, Jake Ron. Actually, I did this, uh, 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 John Jonathan. Uh, so. so it, so just, just just go by Jacron, please. No one has used my first name check in out, years. Check out the first. Check out this. Ready? Look below you. I, I already got it figured out. So. Uh, nice. <laughs> now I feel comfortable. So for those of you who don't know Jacron, he doesn't really go by Jonathan Cronstadt. He goes by Jacron. So I even made you a special lower lower third because I'm like I can't I can't I gotta call him Jonathan all day long. So uh, so if you don't know this, Jacron and I go way back. I actually got to know. Uh, we got, I get to know you, you were running a, a $10 million plus launch at the time, uh, in San Diego. And I was promoting the launch 
we connected there, had a, it was a big party after the launch, which was awesome. Uh, but that wasn't your first foray in information marketing, but it did lead you eventually to where you're at as the president of Kajabi. For those of you who don't know, uh, Kajabi is the membership-based platform, well, it started as a membership-based platform. Now uh, it's lead pages and CRM and everything. We'll talk more about that. I use it in my business. I've used it for, shoot, probably 10 plus years in my business. But first of all, dude, welcome to the show. Glad you're here. Thanks, man. Glad, glad to be here. And uh, I do agree with the comment about the oven of Southern California, dude. We have been cooking out here. So uh, I, I will admit, coming onto the show, I have major like background envy. Like you've got this beautiful backdrop for your video. I mean, you know, and not to mention that you used to be an F-18 fighter pilot. So like I'm coming onto this show wishing that I had prepared to be interviewed from my home office bunker where, you know, I managed to angle my monitor to get like three photos in and a window that's totally washed out. So, I mean, you can tell that I was really ready for this from, you know, a presentation perspective. You're actually, so I, I think it's probably been about 20 interviews and I'll tell you, you're probably top 10% anyway. So don't, don't uh, don't criticize yourself too much. There's the um, uh, I've had lots of guests. Everything from um, you know I had one where his face and it was about the angle that you saw and um, so you're you're good, man. It's the, the nice pictures in the background. Um, I'll take it. <laughs> it's good to go. Tell me your tell tell us a little bit about your journey. I mean, I've i we've known each other for a long time, but share with everyone um, your the journey that you've taken over to. Uh, Kajabi and kind of start from when you got into the information marketing world. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, my the joke I always start with is, you know, God watches out for fools and little children. And I like to think of myself as half and half. <laughs> and for me, the way that I got into this industry really started with the, uh, the biggest failure of my entire life. I was the, you know, VP of a mortgage bank here in Southern California in my early 20s printing money. And of course, when I had money, I was really smart, invested all of it in real estate just in time for the real estate and mortgage markets to crater. Yep. At the same time, everything goes back to the bank. What do I do now? So a lot of these people called information marketers were marketing to mortgage executives. And I got all these letters of, hey, you know, use my sales system. And I was like, this is a really interesting industry. So I got online and I bought the whole enchilada from Dan Kennedy. Now, for those of you that are that old school, you'll remember it showed up like probably six feet high of boxes of yeah. CDs, DVDs, and workbooks and yep. started digging into that and heard a guy on a mastermind, platinum mastermind CD named Joe Polish. And I was like, this guy sounds really interesting. So I called up Joe's office, said, hey, want to hire you for consulting? They said, great. He's 25 grand a day. I said, well, I'm bankrupt. I'll give him $500 for five minutes. And if he doesn't want to talk to me after that, I'm out. <laughs> Knowing Joe, he thought it was hilarious. Whacked my card for 500 bucks. We hopped on the phone, became fast friends, and uh, kind of shortcutting to how I got to Traffic Geyser. Uh, I moved to Arizona, got mentored by Joe for about three months, living in his office. Uh, got hired from there by uh, a guy named Matt Basak, who's an yep. online marketer out of Atlanta. Yep. And Matt invited me to move to Atlanta, spent six months in Atlanta, got hired out of there to work for Chet Holmes and spent a year with Chet Holmes, the uh, previous author, uh, sorry, author of Ultimate Sales Machine. Chet's no longer with us. Um, but that led to Tony Robbins acquiring Chet oh, Holmes' yeah. business breakthrough consulting, which is now Tony's business mastery curriculum. And it was at the first Ultimate Business Mastery Summit that I had lunch with Mike Koenigs and he said, dude, we got to get together doing really cool things. I wanted to get back to Southern California like crazy. And so Mike's like, hey, talk to my partner Rocket. Let's see what we got. And that's how I ended up at Traffic Geyser. And then following Traffic Geyser, it went from Traffic Geyser with Mike to uh, Glazer Kennedy after yep. Bill sold the company yep. to yep. Uh, CEO of Digital Marketer at the time, uh, Ryan Roland and Perry uh, and Richard, amazing time with that org. Um, and then, you know, following that, uh, Success Magazine out of uh, Dallas and uh, now Kajabi for, gosh, almost the last four years, which is crazy to me. Like, I mean, the online world changes so fast. Four years is like an eternity. I can't even believe it. You've seen, I mean, that's crazy. I actually, I think I knew about, I just wrote down all the different names. I think I knew maybe about half of those. I knew you, we worked together a little bit when you were at GKIC, definitely with Mike when you were doing that one launch, by the way, which I think if I remember correctly was Traffic Guys or Fusion. That one launch. That was the second one. So first one was Main Street Marketing Machines. That's right. Which yeah. was named out of the Main Street versus Wall Street. It was helping local businesses. And then its uh, second launch was Main Street Marketing Machines Fusion. 
Fusion. And that was the one, I think if I'm right, it was like $11, $12 million launch or something like that. In its day, Main Street was, and it shows you kind of how the, the online world iterates. So you have the yeah. day that John Reese did a million dollars in sales in 24 hours. And that was the watermark of like, that was the four yeah. minute mile. Like that would never happen. And then all of a sudden you saw people do a million dollars in their first hour. And all of a sudden you saw, you know, Stompernet come around and then Main Street Marketing Machines, which in its day, it was the largest cash collected launch of all time. Since then, we've now seen people go on to do 20, 25 million dollar launches in different niches. So, um, you know, digital products are dead. Long live digital products. <laughs> I know that's a, it's the craziest thing. Like, and I, the, the guy that I mentioned in the introduction is one of the guys that's been around for a long time. So it's not like it's the, somebody new in the business. And the, the, he, this guy basically said, look, Facebook killed the information marketing business. And I said, look, I get it. For example, if I, Boy, I would love to know who it is and I would love to go toe to toe with them. Oh, I know. You, so you'd, and he would agree with you now, by the way. So, um, but I've been using the example, like for example, I'm building right in my front yard, I'm building this new wooden um, outdoor sofa for our, our patio. I don't really know much about woodworking, but I've learned a lot on YouTube. And I tell people like, if you're going to, you're going to sell wooden sofa plans or, or videos, you're not going to go very far because you, you, there's thousands of those on YouTube. But at the same time, when you're providing something that somebody can't get, like one of my courses is about speaking. Another one is about consulting forms and scripts and agreements and walking through the, you can't get that by stacking it up online. So yeah, I mean, the information product world died in some regards back in 2008. We used to be able well, to throw up I, that, That's where I think for me, like, and it's one of the things that we really try to speak to at Kajabi is I feel like a lot of people confuse the message with the medium or confuse the transformation with the technology. That's the technology good. will always change. Like if I went out to the information marketing world today and said, hey, good news, I got workbooks and DVDs. Most people are gonna look at me like, dude, I can't even watch a DVD. I don't even have a DVD player in my house. I might have one in my car, but why do I wanna watch an info product in my car? And I can't watch it while I drive. Like it would be something where that technology wouldn't work, but the transformation still does. And so that's where I think people get really locked into this idea of like, oh no, no, it's it's this tech or it's that yeah. tech or it's this delivery methodology. And where I do agree with him, and, and I talked about this at uh, my keynote last year at our user summit, the idea of a static product, depending on the market you're in is dying like yeah. the expectation of people is i want an interactive relationship i want help when i'm stuck i want a community of committed and like-minded users that i can plug into they want different things but the opportunity's never been bigger yeah that's it's a, a i really like that and by the way as you're as you're, as you're watching at home that is a writer downer um the difference between the transformation and the technology we get stuck sometimes as entrepreneurs on the tech. And we're going to talk about tech today, by the way. We're going to talk about some solutions that you can use that I can use. I was telling uh, Jay Cron before we started today, there's a landing page that I created out of Kajabi that is responsible now in the last two years for over 8,000 leads that have come in wow. without a single dime, with not a single dime of advertising, by the way. I'm going to show you that page uh, in a little bit. Before I do that, I want to catch up and chat and say hello to some of our friends. My man, Michael Ford, just joined us, by the way. Jay Cron, you know Michael. Um, oh, totally. What's going on, dude? <laughs> so, um, uh, and I, I say this every time he shows up, but one of the best copywriters in the world, uh, just stopping by to say hello. And Gary, welcome to the show as well. Todd Durkin follower. Uh, awesome, man. Uh, welcome back to the show. He said it's cooler there. Well, so. Um, and David says, yeah, it's all features. That's right. CD software transformation is a benefit. The truth is, People don't really care. The delivery vehicle is nearly meaningless, right? So I always, always tell people, if if I said I could give you a million dollars in a day, you wouldn't go, well, what is it, a CD? Or if I said, like, I just need to meet you and say, you would come. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter uh, the vehicle. Yeah, I'd, actually, I'd actually show up multiple days. I'd show up <laughs> every day that you were willing to make that deal. Yeah, every single one. And it's interesting. So I bought that Kennedy product, by the way, the enchilada. <laughs> and it showed up. It's, I remember the guy, like, it was like a forklift or something. It was no, my, my wife, my wife and I even laugh about it today because like, I'm the guy, like I'm the OCD, like I now have it in like giant Tupperwares that are in the garage. And she's like, why are we carting around 300 pounds of information products? I'm like, no, honey, you don't understand. This is the foundation of my career, my industry. This guy invented information marketing. I have to keep these. I listened to every one of those products. And, and by the way, I have a similar story. 
That showed up and my wife was like, what, what did you do? And I'm like, I just bought it all. I, I said, look, I'm gonna, I was gonna buy it all anyway, so I just figured I'd get it all at a discount. And yeah. um, what, what kind of cult are you in? Like, what, what are all of these weird texts and binders? And come on, man. <laughs> and so, oh man, it's that. But so here's the thing: I don't know anybody who's sending products through the mail anymore. You know, like the CDs. It's funny you mentioned GKIC. So I was talking to, you know, I was doing some consulting work for GKIC, and I was talking to this to the CEO and the president, and they said they went down to their equity uh, partners and they brought one of the products. And there was a girl sitting at the table, at the boardroom table, who's about 24, it was about four years ago. And they opened up the products and they said, well, this is the manual and these are the DVDs. And the 24 year old girl goes, what's a, what's a DVD? And, and they go, oh, you stick it in a DVD player. And she's like, well, what's a DVD player? And, and then they said, oh, you know, you can actually also stick it in your computer. And she's like, I don't think I have a place in my computer. For that. So, so that's, <laughs> So that's the difference between where we are, but fundamentally it's the same thing, which is a transformation in someone's life. I thought that was just, that was really good. Anyway, over to you. Well, I mean, it, it's it's so fun to talk about like where this industry has gone because it, it's something where for a lot of us that are, let's call it old school information marketers, like you have a fondness and a nostalgia for the type of things that we used to engage in that today in all sincerity have kind of been relegated to parlor tricks that the industry doesn't really respond to like yeah. the, it, what used to be demanded as aggressive marketing and direct response has now largely been replaced with authenticity that Ooh. what people look for from a brand has changed completely that like Sure, you can put up a parlor tricks page with the limited digital downloads with the cross outs of how many copies are remaining. And you're dealing with an audience today that's like, no, nah, dude, it's digital. I know you have a million of them. Don't, you know, I'm, and I, I guess I would say two things have changed. Aggressive has been replaced with authentic, but also we have seen a, a global maturation of the market and its demands that we now serve a much smarter, much more informed consumer than ever before. Not to say that they're more intelligent, it's just there's more information available. They're one Google search away from your competitors, from other experiences, from not even competitors, but just tangential replacements for you. You know, you sell an online fitness course and there's an ad for Gold's Gym, technically that is a competitor to your online course. Yeah. So it really is something where what you're bringing is going to need to change but in the same token, the opportunity has never been bigger. I mean, digital education has got to be what, $300 billion or so, you know, there's more than enough money out there. And you've got the rising billions, which is broadband internet connected users coming online for the first time. They're going to want all of the same stuff we want, whether it be passion, whether it be progression in their career, whether it be proficiency in a skill, whatever it happens to be, they're going to want all of the same things and they're going to go online together. It's interesting. So first of all, I love, the two things you said right there, authentic, aggressive has been replaced by authenticity. And I've been talking about that for the last two months. The world just had its, it, the world is done with fake, fake mm -hmm. news stories, fake blogs, fake um, uh, uh, virus statistics, you know, <laughs> everything. <laughs> oh, oh boy, show's getting, show's should, getting we, should, good we go, now. should we go down that road? Um, well, I mean, it really, but you're right though. Like you look at the backlash and what is really happening is people are saying, I don't trust anymore. Yep. Like that, that is, it yep. used to be, we came from a place where position, promotion had an, an understated level of, I trust what you are saying that you're pitching me and I believe you, you're telling me the car has the features, I believe you, you're a president, senator, congressman, obviously I believe you. There was a lot more baked in table stakes trust in a position or a promotion then. Today, distrust is the starting point. That, that if you're coming to somebody, and, and also we live in a generation where we're in the greatest echo chamber of confirmation bias we've ever seen. Oh my so God. make no mistake, nobody actually wants a conversation. What they wanna hear is their opinion coming out of your mouth. And so when you as a marketer, or you as a course producer are going through this process, you're coming to someone oftentimes with a different solution or a different path or a different idea for them to go down. 
But if you don't recognize that by introducing a different idea, you're already violating their confirmation bias and you are coming from a place where they're going to distrust you, it's going to change the way you market. Because 20 years ago, I could market in a way that it was self-evident. You know, you want success. I can teach you how to be successful by my stuff. Today, it's going to be much more from the standpoint of here's my story. Here's all of the reasons why you should trust me. Here's why I've been where you are. I can get you where you want to go. But it's not just self-evident because everyone's seen all the Instagram influencers, you know, renting Lambos or buying a private jet in 30 minute segments to take photos of. It's like, you know, we live in a world where all of that manufactured credibility no longer is credible. <laughs> renting 30 minutes of the Lambo. No joke. Literally saw an article like private jet rentals in like 15 or 30 minute increments. Jet doesn't go off the runway. It's just a photo opportunity. That is... Um... I think, oh man. Anyway, so it's it's interesting. So one of the questions I get fairly consistently is I'll have somebody who will email and they'll say, look, Ed, I'm really interested in coming to your event. I love what you're talking about. I watch the show. It's just, I've been burnt so many times. That's how the question goes. They just go, it's just, I've been burnt so many times. How do I know this is going to work for me? Uh, and it bring it comes back to that authenticity and the I think you said you, you called it maturation, that the point at which people like this isn't a new business anymore and people have have signed up to work with the dude who rented the Lamborghini for thirty minutes and then you show up and you're like why am I why is it my master why is the mastermind at the La Quinta Inn and I thought there could be like fifteen <laughs> people here and now there's like seventy people yeah. and I don't even get to meet the, the guy. best part yeah. of the mastermind is to make your own Belgian waffle and uh, <laughs> breakfast bar. Everything else is downhill. Well, but like if you think about it though, and I mean it, one of the things that I am most appreciative of in my accidental career is I've gotten to work with a lot of people that the marketers of today don't even know who they are. Yeah. And and Dan Kennedy is one where if you sat down with Dan Kennedy and you showed him the most amazing novel innovative offer you can think of in today's market. He's going to say, oh yeah, that's a derivation of yep. the guy who tried it in 1982 and he stole it from this guy in 1940. But the guy who actually started that was this Sears and Roebuck catalog writer in 1848 who popularized the disposable razor. And you're just yep. like, yep. so it's not new then. And what it really comes down to is the newness of it is no longer there, but what has changed and, and talking about the person who comes to an event and, and really is, is having that struggle of like, will this work this time? This is something that I believe all of you should hold as a standard for who you choose to learn from. It's one of the reasons why I'm such good friends with Ed and would come on his show anytime he asked me to, because I know he's been in your shoes. He's been the person in the room thinking, I want to learn this business and I'm going to do whatever I have to, to learn it. And I think that where it all kind of went wrong is when information marketing started, giving you a little bit of a history lesson here, it was never meant to be a business. It was a bonus to the business. It was, I'm an orthodontist. I have three places. I've got really unique advertising to sell kids dental work. And I'm going to let you use my advertising in your clinics because we have a ge geography exclusivity. You know, not, no one's going to drive five states for an orthodontist. So it was like, okay, I've got this $10 million orthodontics practice, and I'm going to add on a million dollars a year by teaching other orthodontists. Then it began to move to this season where in some ways we are now where people mistake the bonus for the <laughs> business. And, <laughs> and it's where people have decided, you know what, I'm just going to be an information marketer. Well, great. You know, what's your expertise? What are you going to teach? How are you going to transform and impact lives? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I'm just going to come out with a course on this thing. Okay. Well, have you done that thing? Like, like, have you really done it? Are you an expert? Are you able to create that transformation because you've created it in your own life? No. Um, you know, I read some books on it and I'm really excited about it. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, this might be a little bit of a tougher journey for you because you haven't actually built the business that you're going to teach others to now build. And that's one of the things for me, man, that like, it is such a hot button. Like the, the idea that it's like, I'm going to teach people to do what I haven't done, to me, that is the thing that is just sucks all the credibility out of this business for all of the people that are really working diligently to create change. Yeah, that's really good. By the way, if you just joined us, my name is Ed Rush. I'm here with Jay Cron. We're talking about how to create online products that rock. We're actually going to get into the product creation. I want to catch up and chat real quick, say hello to some of my friends. I saw Ron just jump in. By the way, uh, Ron used to work with GKIC as well. 
Uh, Ron, you did sell it to me. How you doing? <laughs> Back in the day, Doctor. Yeah, Wendy, I knew I, Ron, Ron and I used to hang out in in the the Chicago office after they moved it out of uh, out of Towson. Back down in the bullpen, right there with all the mm -hmm. sales guys, man. Um, uh, David said, "Oh wait, what did? Who was your comment?" He said he was walking down the beach, and a kid wanted to give me his rap CD for a donation, and I was like, "Dude, I literally have no way to listen to that." <laughs> It's really true. I think my, one of my cars has still has it. It's it's a Lamborghini that has the DVD player, the CD. No, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's the minivan. I, I forget. I get I get the Lamborghini and the well, minivan. But, but you would be right, though. Lamborghini still has it, too. <laughs> Mary Jo, welcome to the show. Oh, man. We're just we're just laughing now. It's just we're done. We're just having fun. So, um, by the way, in about uh, 15 minutes or so, well, let, Ed, Ed just said something in complete passing, though, that I do want to share with all of you that has been probably one of the biggest keys to my success. You never know who you're talking to. Yeah. And whenever you're in a room, at an event, at a dinner, at, at you know, passing people in the hallway, like uh, a friend told me very early on in my career, you always want to be careful because the toes that you step on on the way up are connected to the asses you'll have to kiss on the way down. <laughs> and what's so refreshing is I've been able to build long term friendships with people in the industry that, you know, they've been up when I've met them, they've been down when I've met them, they've been back up after I've met them. Like, you never know who the person that is on that journey with you is going to become and being willing to invest in those relationships will bear dividends, the likes of which you just can't imagine. And the longer you're in that path at a decade in, my friends in this industry are probably the thing I'm most proud of, far more than any of the companies or any of the products. Yeah, I mean, the truth is, Kajabi's doing great, by the way, so don't read into this when, I, when I'm talking about Jcron. If all of a sudden tomorrow he, had a, he, he was required to go find a new place to work, you'd have probably about 50 different people to choose from, frankly. Um, from your mouth to God's ears, we're, we're hoping. And, and I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things. And it's interesting. I mentioned this on a show about a, a couple of weeks ago. My rule has always been like, for example, when I do events, my rule is I never, I always break out any sort of initial judgment. Like I had a guy walk up to me wearing uh, a, a, some sort of t-shirt with holes in it and sweatpants and flip flops. And if I did my first initial clip on him, I would have been like, ah, oh, who is this guy? Turns out he owns a $20 million company. You know, so so I always make it a rule. You don't do, you don't make your first blush on anybody because the truth is, like you said, you know people who were working back in customer support in some company ten years ago who are now the CEO of some company that you want I'll to be aligned you, with. I'll give you the exact example of that. So when I was CEO of Digital Marketer, we had a social media intern named Molly Pittman. Yep. who Molly Pittman grew to become the VP of marketing at Digital Marketer, grew to launch many of her own brands and is now CEO of Ezra Firestone's Smart Marketer, one of the biggest e-commerce uh, and Facebook advertising training companies on the planet. And when I met her, she was a customer service intern and you know we still, not customer service, social media intern. Yep. And we still talk fondly about uh, th those days. So I mean, you really do never know, but the one thing I can tell you, the marketing techniques will change, the technology will change, the business leaders will change, all of that will change. The one thing that will never change is the relationships that you build along the way. And that's yeah. the thing that, you know, I'm not the best marketer, I'm not the best technologist, I am not the best strategist, I am not the best in many, many tactical categories. But one thing that I've been fortunate to do is really be willing to invest in those relationships. And for me, that has made all of the difference. The joint venture partners for promotions, the networks for opportunities, all of those things, um, that, that, that would be my secret sauce above all else. Yeah, and you've done a good job of that. So let's get into a little bit of a discussion about Kajabi because that's where really where we were going. I'm gonna show you, a, I'm gonna show a page on my screen. This is just one of the pages that I created out of Kajabi. I'm gonna tell you what I did with this because this is super powerful as you're watching. It's it's worth uh, noting. So this is, it, when you look at the top a, a menu, you can see this is um, mykajabi.com. So this is on, actually, literally, this page is hosted on the Kajabi platform. Now, what I've got in 21 Day Miracle, which is my um, by far my most popular book, sold almost 30,000 copies of this baby, right in the very first page. Um, and I've shown this to you before on the, sh on the show before, but right on the very first page, there's something that just says free bonus. And when you go to edrush.com slash bonus, you, it takes you, it redirects you to this page right here. Now, the numbers on this, this page right here, the numbers on this is I have 
25.7% of the people who buy the book opt in to this free membership site. Okay. So now that's not 25% of the people that hit the page. That's 25% of the people that buy the books, the book. And what happens is this is why I love this system. And I'm, again, I'm going to throw it to you, uh, Jay Cron in a moment, just to talk about what you guys have created. Cause I think it's brilliant. This is just the front end. So for those of you who are inside of ultimate speaker, for those of you who are inside of um, my secret weapon product or my 21 day time freedom product, those products are all hosted in the back end uh, by Kajabi as well. In other words, um, I've got all of my products there. So what happens here is this is a free product. When somebody opts in, they automatically get credited into my membership site for 21 day miracles. So their first experience with me is like, wow, look at all the content that Edge created that he's giving me away for free. I wonder what he might have uh, behind the scenes um, that's paid. And I'll show you some of that stuff in just a second, but tell me a little bit about what you guys have created inside of Kajabi and then we'll talk about that too. Be my absolute pleasure. Before I do, I'm just gonna give kind of a, a, a two minute or less foundation of why Kajabi exists to be different in a space that has lots of technology to choose from. And I wanna start with a, I guess I would say a, a core belief that we at Kajabi have, which is we believe this industry has long been disadvantaged by providing overwhelm in technology. That I meet more people that are technology collectors than they are technology users. And it's it's something for me that any event I'm at, and invariably, someone's gonna come up to me and say, oh, I don't use Kajabi. And I'm gonna say, oh, really, well, why? And they're gonna say, well, you know, I want to multivariate split test a page with 52 variables using Toguchi methodology, and Kajabi doesn't do that. And I'm going to say, you know, I know what all of those words mean too, but how much have you sold online? Well, I, I haven't sold anything online. I'm waiting, you know, to, to get going with that. And I'm going to say, well, of course, because you're trying to come up with 52 different variants to test on a page. And we see this over and over and over again, that the counterintuitive nature of the people that often know the least about technology, but are the most focused on the transformation they create they're the ones who are generating six, seven, and eight figure results, while the people that are the ultimate technologists are still struggling with, how do I make sure I have a 400 day autoresponder sequence built before I ever get a product to market? So know that what Kajabi is designed to do is to drive your success. It is not designed to do everything. It is designed to be your best friend, and it's designed to be a good friend to any other technology that you want to integrate with it but know that it's designed very purposefully that what we want to do is get technology out of the way. That you as a creator, you should spend all of your time focused on the transformation you create for your clients and telling people about the transformation that you create for your clients. Outside of that, technology should not be a hindrance. It shouldn't be something that you've waited three to five years to launch because you're learning Infusionsoft or some other really complex platform. It shouldn't take you 45 platforms connected. The record that we have is someone leaving WordPress for 64 plugins to come to Kajabi. It's something that the technology, in my opinion, has disadvantaged most in the industry. And it stems from, if you have an industry that teaches, sometimes there is value in the complexity and then helping people sort through it. We desire to remove all of the complexity from the technology. So Kajabi is going to be your one-stop shop for everything you need to be successful online. It's going to cover your website and branding. It's going to cover your landing pages, which is gonna be your email capture. It's going to cover your content marketing and blogging. It's gonna cover your email, uh, both autoresponder and broadcast. It's gonna cover your ability to do events on the platform. It's going to cover all of your product and delivery membership management, checkout processes, and every pricing product package you can imagine, whether it be one-time uh, setup fees, free trials, you know, content, uh, membership sites, ongoing subscriptions, Netflix style offers. There's literally nothing that we can't support. So that's what it does, but that's the foundation that it comes from. So hopefully that helps. Yeah. I mean, we did, I've built entire funnels. I mean, I showed you the front of the funnel, but I've built entire funnels inside of Kajabi, including landing pages, full sales pages that look amazing, uh, checkout pages where people go pay all the way into the delivery of the product. And what Jonathan just said about the technology is actually really important. I'll just tell you this page that you saw, um, this landing page, 
the 21 day miracle landing page, that page I had exactly zero a button swipes on. Okay. So I didn't actually build that. Here's what I did. Very simple. When I was writing the book, I said, here's what I want. I want a page where people can go and get a free membership site. I actually reached out, John, John, uh, Jay Cron, you remember this? I, said, I, knew. Hey, I, I, know? I know the person who helped you. Yeah, it was, it, it was uh, Catherine. I said, who do you know who's smart on this that I could pay and she made an introduction and I kid you not, the next day she's building this thing for me. So as a marketer, just remember, you don't even need to do, you don't even need to be the one to do this stuff. I'll, I'll tell you, it's simple. It's not that hard, okay? So it's not like you can't do it, but I'm gonna tell you, there are people out there, there's certified pros that work uh, with Kajabi. There's other people out there with the skills to be able to do it. So but anyway, let's talk a little bit about what uh, what the software can do. And then we're going to answer some questions you have about products or anything else that you want to talk about. So, Oh, I wasn't told there would be a live q and I'm excited. <laughs> we'll it's see great. We're play, playing with no net. Let's see where this goes. <laughs> so, um, so let's crank. Talk a little bit about what's inside, what people can get. And in the meantime, what I might do is just click through a little bit and show show you some of you what I'm doing uh, inside of it as well. Yeah, absolutely. So Kajabi is really designed to be a one-stop shop for a digital entrepreneurs. That this is going to be something that if you woke up today and said, I want to have a digital business and I'm going to design a suite of products, a single product, whatever your business model is, we're here to support it. So that's going to include getting your branding set up, your presence online. You know, we um, wholeheartedly believe, uh, contrary to what some other people have stated, we believe that websites today are more important than ever. That, you know, when you look at the way that society buys, uh, GoDaddy and um, Squarespace and Wix have now just today been able to run mainstream media advertising to website builders and be able to do so successfully. What that should indicate to you is that the world has now realized that a website is table stakes that I won't buy from a business that doesn't have one. So we really believe in providing a website that is beautiful, but also functional, not something where it just happens to be a giant, beautiful fo photograph, but there's no call to action. There's no email capture. There's no way to begin building and engaging with your audience. So everything we build is meant to be an equal amount of brand and an equal amount of effectiveness, because we also believe today that aesthetics matter. Um, you heard Ed and I talk about the aggressive season of direct response marketing. We believe that today design and user experience matters, that it needs to look good, but it also needs to work well. It needs to be a professional branding area. So Kajabi is going to help you have that brand presence. Then when you begin marketing your business, as Ed said, it's going to be a collection of landing pages. Landing pages are going to be where you capture email addresses, whether it's a free download report, an opt-in to see a video sequence, an opt-in to attend a live webinar of some kind. Whatever it happens to be that you're gathering your list, we're going to be helping you build those landing pages. We have templates. Um, our Encore page builder is spectacular, really a joy to use, no coding required. And then you're also going to have sales pages, which is where you're going to begin selling your product, whether you're using a video, a long copy sales page, whatever format you're choosing, Kajabi's got you nailed on that one. Checkout, membership management, accepting payments, all of that is built in out of the box. So all of these things are already connected. You're not going to need to API into things. You're not going to need to put them together. So you're going to be building your presence. You're going to be building your pricing and products. You're going to be building your promotions. You're going to be building everything in an environment that also has all of the communication you're going to need for tying all of those together. So imagine having an email autoresponder where you're gonna be able to automate all of the emails you need to send, whether it's from a lead capture page, from a sale that's purchased with access to a product, or even being able to trigger automations like in a product when someone completes a lesson or when someone doesn't complete a lesson. You can drop an email and say hello, ask them where they got stuck or congratulate them on the fact that they finished that module. So think about an environment where your whole business is in there, but even better is you're able to build automation processes off of every aspect of your business, whether it be in the marketing process, the sales process, the course consumption process, and everything in between. Yeah, That's like I said, we did, I've, I've used it from beginning to end to launch products that were mid six figure uh, product launches, no problem. I just pulled the website up, by the way. This is actually the inside of my Kajabi platform. You can see it on the left-hand side, uh, you've got a website builder, which is really cool. Uh, you've got all, so like, this is where you can start if you just wanna build your own personal website. You've got your products. You can see mine in here. I've got uh, my four products that I've got inside of Kajabi. About to put three more in there, by the way, dude. 
Um, all of them. See, I, my, my favorite for sure is the strategic advisor with the chess piece. Like I, I dig <laughs> that branding like that. That's just, that's fun. So I'll take you into, uh, uh, let me, let me just do a little demo on this real quick. Cause it'll be helpful for you to see. Um, this is the membership site piece of the platform. Okay. So this is actually where all of my products are hosted. Um, and I usually, uh, I usually create my products in this format. So I have a little button that says start here where basically no one ever starts for some reason. <laughs> then I've got this little button right here. This is like the, usually the first grouping of things that I teach. And then the second one is the second grouping of things. And then I've got my bonus modules. But like, if you look here, the cool thing about the system is, for example, you've got the video of the training right here. You can see me teaching with a goofy jacket. Um, but then down here, it's got the ability for me to drop in a transcript. And also if I want to the MP3 audio, which I find people particularly like, what's the deal with my hair? Dang. I'm not That's even beautiful, that. dude. It's a, it's a good look. And, and what's what I want to also indicate as well is <laughs> all of this is completely customizable. So you can choose completely different look, feel, color combination. Um, different themes. So, you know, you can choose top nav, which would be, you know, hey, I'm going to navigate through the course uh, via the top nav bar. You can choose a left nav where you're going to see all of everything, you know, whether it's in nested menus that expand out or, I mean, all of this is completely customizable. And one of the other things that makes Kajabi very unique, we actually give you access to the code. So if for some reason you wanted to say, I want a fully custom experience, all I want to use is the piping underneath it you have the ability to build a fully custom liquid template and have it be entirely yours. Now, I wouldn't advise that because again, I come from a place where, again, transformation, talking about transformation, that's where your results are gonna come from, yeah. not the technology. Yeah. But if you really wanna geek out on the technology, we've got plenty of places for you to do that. All right, so I'm gonna jump into a couple of questions. Before I do that, let me just throw a website up on the bottom of the screen. It is edrush.com slash Kajabi, and that is spelled K-A-J-A-B-I. Uh, when you do that, let's get rid of that guy. Uh, when you do that, you're gonna show up on the Kajabi main page, which is what you're gonna see right here. You can learn a little bit more about the product. Again, I've been using this now, shoot, at, at least six years, probably more like eight years if I had to take a, take a, a well, while. And, and, and Ed, to, to your point, like we are, we are a 10 year old, overnight success. Like most people don't realize we've now been on, uh, you know, the Inc 5000 list five years back to back. Um, Kajabi has powered iterations of this industry. We started with the Kajabi classic platform, which really popularized the all in one membership site more so than any other platform. Yeah. Then um, a, I think it was five years, it'll be five years ago this year, uh, we actually killed or cannibalized more appropriately the classic platform with new kajabi which is now just the kajabi flagship platform because we wanted to add all of these features you know like emailing automations all of these other pieces that classic wasn't capable of so um you, you talk about a company that really puts the user first we risked it all to cannibalize our classic platform in order to build what we knew the user base wanted. So it, it's something that we have a very robust product process. Our chief product officer has now been with the company over five and a half years. And we now have probably uh, 150 employees here domestically that are supporting the ongoing development of the platform as well as uh, 40 employees overseas. So it is definitely a place where it's no longer three guys in a garage. You know, you can feel uh -huh. completely confident that this is uh, an enterprise level company resource support team that has your business at its first, you know, first core value. That's great, man. We got a whole bunch of questions, so we'll bounce into that. One of the first questions, by the way, hey, by the way, if you just joined us, my name is Ed Rush. I'm here with Jay Cron. We're talking about online products that rock. Uh, in a moment, we're going to go to your questions, and I want to make sure that we get uh, answers to what you have, uh, especially regarding membership sites. I'll just tell you parenthetically, uh, I think the information marketing business is in its third or fourth renaissance right now. I'm telling you, man, all of a sudden, the world just woke up and is ready to hear from you. Uh, and I'm going to be talking about this for a while, but well, when you hey, your, to, to that point, Ed, like, look at, think about the fact that we now live in a world where you and Stanford are delivering their classes the same way. And Stanford's <laughs> charging 70 grand a semester and they're doing it via video. Like digital education just got real. 
And you, of course, you're saying that because clearly Stanford's education is far inferior to what I'm completely. Doing. Why? <laughs> why in the world would I pay seventy thousand dollars to go to Stanford to learn things that were outdated because they're textbooks that were printed ten years ago? When I can go to Ed Talks today. Like, That's exactly I mean, right. I don't I know. Just, anyone anyone going to Stanford right now? Sorry, no, you missed it. You I missed think it. anyone going mistake. to Stanford right now probably agrees with you. Um, <laughs> yeah, give me that money back. So, um, all right, cool. Some great questions, by the way. Uh, the first one is one I, I know you get quite a bit, so I'm going to hit, hit this one first because I've actually seen you answer this before. Uh, the first question is from uh, Gina. She says, how does Kajabi compare to Udemy, Teachable? There's all these different platforms. How does it compare? Uh, you, you answer it. I'll tell you, Gina, I use Kajabi because of the his answer to this question, but go ahead. You, you help us with this one. Well, Jake. first, Gina, thank you very much for asking. Um, I really do get that question a lot, and the way that I'm going to answer the question to start might shock you a little bit. What I'm going to say is what matters the most is what's going to drive results for you. Um, you know, we believe that we are the best platform, no question. But what matters is what you're going to put into action. And and so it's something where I want you to get your business out there because the world needs it. So whatever is the fastest path for that, that's what you need to be doing. I believe it's Kajabi, and let me tell you why. So Udemy is one where I believe that Udemy holds a place in digital education primarily as a discovery vehicle. We view Udemy as a great funnel for feeding people to Kajabi because Udemy basically gives you the audience, but what they do is they take away all of your opportunity. That you're gonna take your 20 years of history, your magnum opus of a course that you would charge a thousand, two thousand, five thousand dollars for. Udemy is gonna tell you it's worth 20 bucks. Yeah. And you know, you have no control over your pricing, you have no control over your audience, you have no control over how much they promote you over somebody else. So really, it's an opportunity to get leads. It's not an opportunity to build a business because you don't own the business. All you have is a leads funnel coming from Udemy. Teachable, great platform. Very, very different. Teachable is a single task application. So all of the things that Kajabi does related to email marketing and automation, related to your landing pages, sales pages, all of the pieces of your business, you're going to need to go elsewhere to get those in a robust fashion. Teachable very much focuses solely on the course delivery. They also don't have nearly the flexibility or themes or customizations that Kajabi does in the course delivery um, process. So you're not going to have the same level of creative flexibility in Teachable. In addition, Teachable also has um, a lot of areas that I would say are just reflective of a, a much younger platform. That if you're looking for, you know, all of the different types of import options and integrations and the things that as you move into seven and eight figure businesses, you're going to find that a lot of those things are not yet on that platform. Yeah, it's good. Very good. Uh, Michael Fortin with a good comment. People are stuck at home without jobs and more free time, so they are hungry for information. In addition to that, too, I love what he just said. In addition to that, it's the world is so uncertain right now that naturally people, um, every time the world gets rough around the edges, my products, let me just put it this way. Every time, every time the tensions in the world go up, my product sales go up. And the reason why is because people are are, are grasping onto answers to their uncertain questions. That, by the way, Sometimes people are like, well, that's like uh, taking advantage of a bad situation. I'm like, no, it's not. It's me helping people through a bad situation. It, it, like, it, it works very similar to alcohol. Like, what do you do when life's terrible? Oh, I'm have a cocktail, take the edge off. What do you do when you're celebrating? Oh, let's have cocktails. So it, it's very <laughs> much the same thing, except in information marketing, the difference is going to be, wow, my life is amazing right now. What a great time to learn a new skill or what a great time to you know really double down and extend my lead, extend my capabilities start a side hustle so I have even more yeah. opportunity in my life. When the chips are down, it's, wow, I really need to reinvent. I really need to be at my best. I really need to learn new skills to survive. So whether the market is up or down, the motivation is the same. This is spoken by a guy who has a freezer full of craft vodkas, by the way. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> that, that is absolutely. And I will tell you, the one thing that this quarantine has done, I have had a lot more time to think and drink, that's for sure. <laughs> the freezer needs to be uh, refilled, I guess. Yeah, um, I need a bigger freezer. So just that's it. That's it. Just get a bigger freezer. All right. I want to make sure I get to the questions. I'm bouncing around a little bit. But Dr. Winnie Lee, just a quickly, uh, uh, not just the membership hosting site, but also the website and the website building. I think you did cover that a little bit after she asked the question, but but just talk well, let's let's it. let's dive into it a little bit because I yeah. think there's something interesting. So one thing that I am most excited about, and and I could brag about our products, I could brag about our features and capabilities. 
What I like to brag most about is our customers. And so for those of you that don't know, about six months ago, our user base actually crossed over a billion dollars in their products sold wow. at Kajabi, which wow. is exciting, but it's not nearly as exciting as last month, our user base sold over $60 million of their products in a single month. So wow. if you wanna see where we believe the industry is going, took us a little bit less than 10 years to get to a billion dollars in aggregate information sold by our users. But now we are almost on a billion dollars a year of information being sold through the platform. So wow. 10 years to get to a billion, a billion a year going forward. So you're seeing an industry grow. But the reason that I share that is because to your question about Kajabi as a website, the same frame that I would apply to every area of Kajabi, it is designed to make you money. So we want to strike the perfect balance of brand and uh, aesthetic with the effectiveness of email capture and revenue generating activities that we're not going to have you build a website that is only beautiful because only beautiful doesn't put revenue on you know your business we're also not going to build a site that's totally ugly and only revenue driving because we believe that today you can no longer have one or the other it can't just be an ugly site it's got to be beautiful because people are spending enough time online now that they know the difference. Yeah. So every template you look at, it's going to be designed purposefully to drive results in both categories. It is going to look and feel like a spectacular professional experience, but it's going to have all of the insights, UX and best practices that is going to make sure it drives results for you. And simple. That's important, by the way. So most software companies uh, have what what's called feature creep. In other words, they just, people just keep asking for more stuff and most software companies just keep jamming things in so that no one, by the time they're done, you can't even figure out where to start. Uh, it, it, they manage to really keep it very simple so that the average person like me can use it. Um, by the way, a good comment from Mike, Kristen Sabayan's product designs look great. You know that she created mine. Um, in fact, um, Kristen worked for quite a long time behind the scenes with Kajabi as well. So Great. Yep. Now, Kristen's a, a mutual friend, Mike. I know she was on the phone with you yesterday because I texted her to say hello, and she said she'd hit me up when y'all got off. So, <laughs> so small world, Mike Semmel. Small world. Well, but, but but then again, look. So here's a commenter on Ed Talks, who's a friend of Ed's. Yep. That you know, yep. we're all talking about the same person, Kristen Spian, who's an unbelievable designer and creative. Relationships matter. So cool, man. I'm gonna send this clip to her. Um, Ron Penska says, can I use Kajabi to send, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with the answer to this, by the way, because I'm gonna show you what I do with my book. Um, Ron says, can I use Kajabi to send people to my book from Amazon and still be able to track customer and reach out uh, after purchases? So Ron, I'll take this just a little bit of a step further. If you go to, where's the website? If you go to, um, check out the one that's sitting right in front of you now. It's called, it's edrushbook.com. I'm gonna pull it up. It's actually sitting on your screen right now. If you go to edrushbook.com, this is a Kajabi page that has, so this is what I use this for, Ron, when I'm on radio. So I do quite a bit of, of talk radio and people always go, where can we find out more about you? And I say, hey, go to Ed Rush Book. This takes them to a Kajabi page where the left-hand side, they can click to go buy my book. The right-hand side goes and takes them to the page that I already showed you. So there's two paths on this. This is the page that I told you. This is the beginning of the 8,000 person um, opt-in funnel that, I, that I've gotten that many opt-ins from based on uh, this right there. Now, the benefit to the way that Kajabi works is when somebody opts in to that funnel, it gets access to whatever is the free thing that you're getting. That person's name automatically goes into your database sitting inside of Kajabi, which means you can automatically follow up. You can send an email sequence to uh, you can send some sort of promotional sequence, and then when you're ready to offer them something, they've got that abil ability as well. So, uh, Jake and, and, and Ron, to to that point, one of the things that Kajabi has been massively successful in, um, and Brendan Burchard has actually used it for his multiple bestseller books, is the free book funnel. And so, it's something that you know Amazon has some amazing opportunities for for books. I wouldn't necessarily look past the opportunity that you now have to really go direct to market and leverage your book as a lead gen opportunity without necessarily needing to go through Amazon. So there's a lot of opportunities that as you begin to build your own universe of marketing technology and leveraging it in your business, you're gonna have a lot more flexibility that you know they can find your book anywhere. That's good. Lior asked two questions. I'm gonna do both of them. I'm gonna do the second one first and then the next one. So because you mentioned Brendan's, what Brendan did with his book, so we could probably talk about that. So Lior says, can Kajabi support a business growing 
to eight figures and beyond. I'm assuming you have plenty of examples of that, but I um, love this question. the other question, it's a good question. The other question is, uh, where is your other question, Lior? She asked about book funnels. Um, can somebody do a book funnel in Kajabi? So kind of tag team those two questions together. So they actually go together quite nicely because a lot of the eight figure and beyond businesses are using book funnels. Um, so majority of the individuals that you're going to meet that have businesses of that size and scope have a lot of different funnels that are leading into their business. Free book funnel is normally one of them. So can Kajabi support eight figure businesses? Absolutely. All day long, twice on Sunday. If I told you how much Brendan Burchard has put through the platform over the period of time, it would uh -huh. blow your mind. Yep. Um, it, you know, it really, it, it's the only time in my life that I'm like, boy, I wish we had a transaction fee, but we don't, we let you keep all the money. Um, <laughs> in his case, we'd love to have one. I digress. And as a book funnel, absolutely. So a free book funnel, the key is going to be, can you capture the information? Can you get the book purchase at, you know, a self-liquidating cost shipping and handling only? And then can you have an upsell following, which really helps you to reduce the lead cost that you're going to be generating? Yes, you can do all of those things. And you also have order bumps, which equally helps you lift that average order value. And our checkout right now is with our product team, we're actually going through one of the largest redesigns and revamps of the process that we've ever undertaken, which is going to come with multiple upsells. So you're basically, you know, look, if you wanna add five upsells on the back of a free book campaign, go nuts. Um, so we've got a lot more coming in those categories. And one of the things that I am most proud about is how much input our user base has into our product process. We are doing hundreds of user interviews every single month on each area of the application to really identify what are those use cases and what do you need going forward? And we're really digging it. So yes, eight figures and beyond, absolutely, all day long, have some fun with it. Free book funnel, no problem, we can do that in our sleep. This is a question, Bill says, does Kajabi have bulletin board area or somewhere where individuals in their tribe can share posts and make comments, uh, and can they be moderated? I'll tell you, I know the answer is yes, because my I used the first revision of Kajabi back in back when we all had one jacket and two ties, and that feature was in there then. So I'm assuming it's still there in a- There's yeah. actually now two ways that you can do it. Um, we actually have two areas. So you've got the comments area in every course, so you can choose to interact in the comment threads on the lessons and encourage your users to interact in the comment threads on the lessons. You can also jump into our community module. And our community module is one where we just released the first iteration of it last year. That's another one that's up for a pretty tremendous revamp this year. But community is really going towards that idea of if I wanted to build a product where the product was the community, where I'm interacting with the users in a closed community, that's the goal of our community module on the platform. And Kajabi does come standard with that. It's something that really we believe we're seeing a lot of people leave Facebook. So Facebook has really become a massive distraction machine for yeah. marketers that are trying to create transformation. Like how in the world are you going to get people to pay attention when they're browsing cat memes and political <laughs> posts? And like, like yeah. I know for me, I'm happier the days that I don't even check Facebook yeah. because it's just become such a cesspool. We believe that the what Facebook showed us is the value of community and the uh, catalyst power it has in transformational education we believe that we're going to see a renaissance of those old school forums and interactive methodologies from back in the day, moving them off of Facebook. Because right now, if you're putting your users on Facebook in a community, all you're really doing is making them advertising targets for all of your competitors. Yeah, that's good. Um, you know, when, when Zuckerberg first created groups, he said he'd never run ads to them. There's now ads in groups. We believe it should be held very, very closely because your audience is your audience. And yes, you can do that bill in Kajabi. Good stuff, man. I got a couple more questions. We're going to wrap up here in about a minute and a half. I'm going to ask you, Jake Ron, for some last minute thoughts. Um, I'll just do this one real quick. Is, it, is a membership site free or do you, can you charge both? So you saw one example where I've got this membership site here. This is a free one, Arthur, where people opt in to get a free membership site. And then of course I've got, um, where am I? There, this is the strategic advisor course, which of course people pay to get access to. Um, Which they should. I mean, look at that hair. I'd pay for access. Crazy with the jacket and the hair. Um, uh, I couldn't find the question, but Mike Semmel asked a question. Mike's a longtime uh, user uh, of Kajabi and a uh, digital security expert. He asked about two-factor authentication. So he's got people handing passwords away to their friends. Are you guys have a security upgrade coming or anything like that? 
Uh, so it's, it's interesting. Um, we talk about this a lot and it's something where I'll give you, I will give you our opinion and then I will give you what we're doing about it because they're slightly different. Our opinion is Wistia wrote an article about five years ago that it's called, if you can see it, you can steal it. And it basically goes through the idea that today online with screenshots and screen recording and everything else, it is nearly impossible to make your content unstealable. Yeah. And for us, the people that we see that drive tremendous results, they're not worried about it because the subsection of a subsection of a subsection of people out there that are going to take advantage of that is so small. It really is not representative of lost revenue. If anything, and I know you're going to think I'm crazy when I tell you this, if anything, if somebody steals your content, it actually makes them more predisposed to buy from you in the future because it's yeah. indicating that they're interested. Yep. That being said, yes, we are uh, ramping this up. We actually just hired a new uh, director of security, uh, pulled him out of one of the premier uh, development organizations here in Orange County. And we are going to be adding a lot more to uh, whether it be single sign-on, whether it be two-factor authentication, or whether it be uh, ability to kind of look at logins and, and, you know, looking at if somebody's logging in from areas and multiple places, sharing passwords, all of those kind of things are going to be coming up in future development. But just know that for us, it certainly is something that no matter how secure we make it, there is technology out there to steal it. So uh -huh. we always come from the place that it's like, look, we're all in this to grow the business, stay focused on growing your business and don't worry about the three to five bad actors that are, are yeah. going to take advantage of it because all it's going to do is shift your focus. My whole thing is if somebody steals it, they weren't going to be a good customer for me anyway. So who cares? And if they, and then occasionally somebody does get access to it on some free site someplace, and then they end up coming to an event, becoming a coaching member or something. And that well, helps. So you look, you look at Costco and Costco operates on, I think it's a 4% or 8% margin on everything they sell, which is a very slim margin considering that information marketing is probably the reverse. It's a 95% margin. Yeah. And you go to a return line at Costco, you're gonna see some dude in there with a electric toothbrush that he's been using for three months that he's returning and Costco's still gonna take it back. They're not gonna be like, dude, come on, you've been using this thing for three months, we're not selling to you anymore. It, it very much is the same thing for us, that the, the amount of people that are gonna take advantage of a policy are far, far, far smaller yeah. than the amount of people that are going to feel excited and comfortable to do business with you because you have a policy that's reversing that risk. Costco so did, it, did say you couldn't return toilet paper, which I thought was hysterical because all the turds that bought 5,000 rolls of toilet paper now, I know. now have to live with it. <laughs> I know. The fact, that, the fact that they even had to say it is because they knew people were going to return toilet paper. They knew it. They saw it coming. <laughs> Quick one, and then we'll begin to wrap up. The answer to this is yes. By the way, if you have a list in Aweber, you can upload it into Kajabi. And I think the I think you can do it easily too. So one um, thing on that, Linda, that's also exciting that we're uh, beginning to experiment with with our uh, new accounts and, and something we're ramping up heavily this year is we're now giving all of our users a customer success manager. So when you sign oh, up for Kajabi, cool. you're actually going to oh, have a, yeah, it's basically, it's not meant to be support. Support is still support for those just in time questions as you're working. Customer success manager is more of the proactive strategic how do you accomplish what you want to accomplish on a forward looking basis? And it's something that we're making available on our plan levels. So uh, we're really, really excited about it. All right. So the website, we're going to have to roll up. The question just keep coming in, man. All of a sudden, Jcron's like got really popular over here. Um, by the way, Mike, <laughs> Horton, a good comment, by the way, uh, what he said about user experience is massively important. Google now ranks according to user experience. The way to think about this is if somebody goes to Google, type something in, they click to your website, they go to your website, and one second later, they come back, Google knows, hey, look, they just came back a second later, but they probably didn't get what they wanted. But if that yep. person goes and clicks and clicks and clicks and stays on your website and, and, and participates for 15 minutes in the user experience, Google knows that as well. And Google gives you credit and will rank your website higher and give you more visibility because of that. And Kajabi is the kind of site that brings people in and engages them in the user experience. So. That's yeah, why Kajabi that's was designed foundationally to provide the same theater and excitement of unboxing a physical product in the digital world that Good. you can't rely Good. on just content. You have to have the context because the greatest content in the world, if it's in the worst user experience ever, people aren't going to enjoy it. And you can't rely on the physical product to do the heavy lifting. So all of our development is designed to basically make sure you keep the money that you earn when you sell a product. So the experience is going to be on par with the amazing content that you're going to create. That's good stuff, man. 
Well, we we didn't get to the end of the questions, but we we got to the end of the interview. I just want to respect your oh, time. It sounds, sounds like I it sounds like I sold myself on a second appearance on Ed Talk. Yeah, you did. Hey, dude, if you want to come back, you are in, man. I tell you, uh, I, I I have a high bar, but you passed the high bar, and very few people have come back for their second. Which is rare because like, I don't pass yeah. many bars. I don't so, pass many bars at all. So you. <laughs> well, now that it's in your freezer, so. <laughs> Um, so, all right. So I really appreciate you coming on. I'm going to give you a moment for your last, uh, for your last thoughts here in about 30 seconds. Let me just tell you, as you're watching today, um, you're looking at a guy who's been in, in this industry for quite a long time, been there, done that, got the t-shirt and is still doing it. Uh, I've used this piece of software as a foundation for my business. Now, like I said, I think it's been six years, but it, it's probably been even longer than that. Um, it works and it's been responsible in, in my business for millions of dollars generated in revenue, millions, okay? So give it a shot, just give it a try. Um, there are people out there, we've already discussed this, that are more than happy to help you as consultants if you wanna hire someone to help you implement some of this stuff. But even then, frankly, it's not that even that hard to just get a page up and start to test the success of it. And right now you do need to get your market message out there in a way that attracts people to you. So give. Kajabi a shot. There's a 14 day trial that's right below you. It's edrust.com uh, slash Kajabi. Just give it a shot, play around with it, start to build some products, maybe build a, a, a opt-in page and start attracting the right audience to your business and see the results. Jay Cron, take us home. So bottom line, if you're listening right now to Ed Talks, here's the great news. You have everything you need to be massively successful in this industry. You have a leader who's going to help make sure that you've got all of the qualitative elements, all of the strategic elements of how you build your business. And you have a platform that is designed to make sure you implement it easily, quickly, and start earning rather than just learning. So I want to really encourage you, if you've been waiting to take action, our user base sold over $60 million last month alone. And if none of that was yours, some of it should have been. Uh -huh. The industry is only growing. The opportunity is only growing. So please stop collecting technology. Stop collecting courses. Start implementing. Get into action because momentum is all that matters. So ask yourself, what are you going to do today so that you feel better about your business tomorrow? And just keep doing that until you wake up and you've hit your goals. That is awesome, man. Great comments coming up in chat. Uh, we'll stick around for a minute in chat just to say, Thank you and hello, Jay Cron. Thanks, dude. I appreciate you stopping by. You're definitely welcome back. Uh, we should do it Woo! again. Actually, pretty yeah. soon. Don't forget tomorrow's copywriting 401 part two. I'm going to be taking you through an awesome sales letter to show you how to get people to say yes. And I will see you tomorrow. Ed Talks Live is out. <laughs>